Hello everybody, it's Wednesday, November 25th, 2020. Back with another update today. Now real quick before we get started, I'm going to be joining Rethinking the Dollar on YouTube for a live stream that's going to be 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So maybe check that out if you'd like to get more insights and knowing Mike at Rethinking the Dollar. It's probably going to be a lot of different topics covered when he does his live streams. You never know what's going to come up in these conversations. So hope to uh, catch you over there. And it's going to be in just a few hours when I'm, when I'm putting this out here today on Wednesday. Well, we continue to watch this economic illusion being played out in front of us. And we know we've been discussing so many times here how the uncertainty is increasing, increasing, increasing. And now we have this political war going on. Uh, but no matter what happens on that end, what can we do? We can prepare ourselves for what lies ahead of us. And I think one of the most dangerous things happening right now is the illusion or the narrative being put out there that the economy is somehow recovering. Well, first of all, even before the lockdowns really made it noticeable with the millions of unemployment uh, claims being filed. Even before that, this economy was basically one big lie. Why? Because it was based on lending, spending, and pretending. So just think about all the jobs that were created because of all the lending and debt that had been issued, right? And we look at these numbers, the unemployment number, uh, the GDP number. Uh, think about the GDP number. It's consumption mostly, right? So if you were to eliminate everyone's debt and give out UBI, let's say $5,000 a month to everybody, you would see a huge jump in GDP. Now, does that mean that the economy is uh, doing good for long term? No, it just means that we base these numbers on people going out and spending money, in most cases, money they don't have. And that's why you see most people living paycheck to paycheck. Most people are in some sort of debt. So let's start right here out of CNBC. Weekly jobless claims higher than expected as labor market takes a hit from new lockdowns, basically. Now, they're saying that these claims, new unemployment claims, rose unexpectedly. Well, was it really unexpected when you're locking down multiple states now going into lockdown 2.0? Um, but even as the many states started opening up here in the past few months, was this really a recovery? Was this um, dropping that quickly? Well, let's just draw another line here so we can take a look at this. Uh, this is not much of a recovery. Right, look at pre-lockdown again and look at this. This was a very, very slow drop in new jobless filings. Now, a real recovery would have looked like this. It would have been an upside-down V because you have the spike in unemployment, and then you have the drop. Right, so this is nowhere near the V-shaped recovery. In this case, of course, an inverted V. And with all of the, uh, the lack of information out there, I think this country is in a real bad position and you can see it if you just look for it. We've talked about the food lines, how so many more people are dependent on food uh, lines and handouts and food banks. And somehow people think that there's always going to be some sort of program there, some sort of handout there for them. So that's a big reason why a lot of people lived life irresponsibly, right? They went out and took on debt that they really didn't have to take out. A lot of people spending on entertainment, travel, unnecessary spending across the board. And I'm not saying not to have fun and go out and travel and do things, um, but it should be after you've saved up some emergency expenses, maybe a year or two of living expenses, and then take your vacations. But the problem is it's very difficult for most people to do that because of the rising cost of living, uh, the cost of housing, the cost of just bare necessities, food, uh, energy. We're in an, an inflationary environment, so it makes it very, very difficult. So most people just say, hey, I'm not going to try to save up money. I'm just going to enjoy my time here. Uh, I'm not going to save. I'm not going to worry about it. There's programs for me if something bad happens. Now, how well are these programs working? Well, in many cases, not so well. This is a political article right here, Politico. And this was widely reported. California inmates, part of a $1 billion unemployment fraud scheme. So we have inmates collecting unemployment when people that actually deserve the unemployment, people in the gig economy really had a lot of trouble getting unemployment and even now nine months after this big lockdown recession began uh, there's some people that still have not gotten unemployment checks but yet prisoners somehow got unemployment you see what I'm getting at here so depending on some sort of a program or handout it's not a good idea and I know a lot of people aren't 
a lot of people don't want to end up there, but sadly, this is the uh, society that we've created uh, via the monetary lending and banking system. And if there's not a major transformation or big announcement coming up very soon, a lot of people are in big, big trouble. 9.9 uh, .9 million Americans who are not up to date on their rent or mortgage payments. All right, what is going to happen if they don't, one, either extend this, two, massive debt forgiveness, or monthly checks, maybe UBI, maybe continuous stimulus checks. I mean, this is where we're at, and I'm not saying that they should do those things. We wouldn't even need all of these handouts if it weren't for the system that created this, thanks to the uh, fiat currency funny money banking system that we all live under right now. Right, can you imagine this many people getting evicted or foreclosed at one time, nearly 10 million? And remember a few weeks ago we reported on this, uh, they're hiring gig workers to evict people from their homes as millions struggle to pay rent. So one person getting evicted is another person's job. You can get a, a job now helping people get evicted. I shouldn't use the word help. Uh, you can get a job uh, taking people out of their home. Recent Bloomberg article right here, U.S. recovery more tenuous as jobless claims rise, incomes fall. Remember the big jump in incomes that we saw uh, right as the stimulus checks got sent out, the uh, enhanced unemployment benefits. Uh, people were more locked down. They didn't travel as much, so they didn't spend as much. So you saw a savings jump. You saw you know, disposable income rise temporarily. But now those things are falling. Incomes are falling. Unemployment's kicking back up. Uh, jobless claims, of course, rising. All right, the wheels are coming off the cart, and it's going to be a real rough landing. And no matter which direction this economy takes, I'm talking about deflation or hyperinflation or just stagflation, either way, there's going to be a lot of pain. And I'm just trying to uh, cover all the bases, try to be broad in our, in our preparation and our analysis here. Recent Reuters article right here, U.S. consumer confidence slips, home prices surge. Yes, the housing bubble continues to rise at the same time as all these uh, food lines, massive unemployment, and you see just a massive distortion in prices compared to what Main Street is going through right now. All right, let's check in on the markets. We see the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the S&P up and down just by fractions today. Uh, gold and silver, a little bit of a recovery there. But keep in mind, this could be, and I believe it is, highly, highly manipulated. There have been basically slaps on the wrist for most of these institutions caught rigging the price of precious metals. And this was tweeted out by at bathmat 34 JP Morgan is in trouble for rigging gold and silver markets again. When the asset, gold and silver, gets its value from a derivative, a piece of paper, we have big problems. Also a huge opportunity, a big opportunity. Right, so that's what's happening. The paper markets, which basically are a derivative of the real asset, gold and silver, are used. And we have financial institutions that are leveraged to the hilt, putting in buy and sell orders and manipulating the price of the actual asset, which is pretty, pretty dangerous. But when it stops, and eventually I think it's going to stop, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, and we'll see some real price discovery. And I think we're actually going to go back to a metals-backed currency. And I know that sounds crazy, but when this finally comes to a head, when they can no longer hide it, when there's so many people in the street and living in tents, I think they're going to uh, finally have to uh, admit it and... I don't think they're going to be able to hide this forever. Do you? Let me know what you think. Eventually, I think we're going back to sound money. Hopefully sooner rather than later. But uh, anything can happen. Uh, be careful out there. Stay safe. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Don't forget here uh, later on, Rethinking the Dollar on YouTube. We're going to do a nice chat over there. Thank you. Bye.